price of cryptocurrencies are going to the moon, but is it all bullshit or is blockchain actually useful in real life? That's what we're going to see in this video. Hey, if you don't know me, I'm Julian and on my channel in the blocks, I explain blockchain technology with a beautiful French accent. Censorship on social media is starting to be more and more of a problem. It's a problem for democracy because not everybody can have their voices heard and it's also a problem for creators who can get their social media censored without much recourse possible. But fortunately, blockchain can help. So with a blockchain-based social network, it will be completely censorship resistant. Nobody could silence your voice. But for this to work, there are some challenges. First, there are huge network effects for existing social media. So it would be really difficult to take users from, let's say, Facebook to a decentralized version of Facebook. Another problem is that storing data on the blockchain is very expensive, but on social media, we have a lot of data, especially with pictures and videos. So we do have a real life example of a social media based on blockchain that's called Steemit. That's a blogging system, a little bit like Medium, where author can create article and people can comment. It got some traction when it was released in 2017, but recently it became a bit dead. So we all heard the claims of voter fraud in the US. I don't want to be involved in this debate, but no matter what actually happened, it's a real problem that some people don't trust the voting system anymore. And unfortunately, what happened in US politics always tend to happen in Europe a few years later. So it's not just a problem for the US, but this is a worldwide problem. So if we want to preserve democracy, we need to preserve the trust in the voting system. So in 2021, it's not acceptable to vote with an opaque system when we can have total transparency on the blockchain. If we had an election on the blockchain, nobody could dispute the result of an election. All the data of a blockchain is public, everybody can verify it. Also, nobody could do a voter suppression with a blockchain-based system. To vote, all you would need is a connection to the internet, a wallet software, and that's it. There are a couple of challenges with a blockchain-based voting system. First, to establish the identity of someone in the blockchain, we do need a centralized entity that's going to associate an address on the blockchain to a real identity. And another big problem will be the resistance of politicians because they understand very well that with more voting on the blockchain, people can vote directly for what they want and politicians are less needed. So at the moment, at the level of government, we don't have any real life example of voting, but you could start with local election, like for votation in Switzerland, for example. And in the industry of blockchain, we already have some governance that happen on the blockchain with DAO or Decentralized Autonomous Organization, which are used for the governance of a couple of crypto projects. It's estimated that the total value of the supply chain market is in the tens of trillions, so it's really a big deal. In the supply chain industry, one of the main problems is how to have some traceability and establish that a product is authentic. It's especially difficult if there are a lot of intermediaries. It requires a lot of reconciliation, it's slow, it's expensive, and it's prone to fraud. With a blockchain-based supply chain, it'd be much easier to track a product at the different stage of the supply chain in a really transparent manner. We have some blockchain that focus on supply chain like a VeChain or Hadera Hashgraph, but in terms of real-life adoption, it's not really used by the supply chain industry yet. So I'm expecting that it could start with luxury items because in this case it's very, very important to establish authenticity and after it could spread to other parts of the supply chain industry. In the medical industry, the record of patients have to be shared across many different entities, hospitals, doctors, insurance companies, etc. Generally, the system is very chaotic and opaque. If we use blockchain to share this data, it could be much more transparent and also much cheaper to share the data. That would be a way better experience for patients. But there is a big challenge. By default, the data on the blockchain is public. But in the medical industry, we do care about keeping the privacy of medical record. So we need some blockchain that can handle privacy well, but unfortunately, at the moment, we don't have it yet. It's really sad that so many artists have to give up on their artistic career because it doesn't pay the bill. The industry is built in such a way that only the top artists are rich, but all the rest starve. 
and you also have a ton of intermediaries that take a lot of money from artists. Can we do better with blockchain? Yes. With the blockchain, we could allow artists to monetize their work way better without any intermediaries. An example of that is NFT or non-fungible tokens. NFT can be used to sell digital art on the blockchain. The real innovation of NFT versus just selling a picture is that with NFT, you can have scarcity. An artist can create an NFT with just one copy that represents the ownership of the digital art. And because there is just one copy of this digital art, it has value. That's something that you cannot do with simple images outside of the blockchain. NFT are totally blowing up right now, like for this artist Beeple that sold an NFT for $69 million. We even had famous people who sold their tweets, like the CEO of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, who sold a tweet as an NFT for $3 million. And even outside of this group of superstars, there is a long tail of lesser known artists that are also able to sell the NFT. And this is really huge because it means that a large part of artists can live off their artistic creation and not just be a cliche of the starving artist. Finance is really the main use case for blockchain. This is really important because finance is such a central piece of the world economy. If you want to change the world, we need to change finance and that's what blockchain allows us to do. First of all, with blockchain, we can have a digital gold. That's what we have with Bitcoin. A digital gold is better than a physical one because you don't need to store it, so it's cheaper to own it. Also, with digital gold, nobody can take it from you. Also, with physical gold, we don't know how much will be produced, but with Bitcoin, we have a limited number of coins. So it's a much better store of value. Then with blockchain, another good thing we can do is bank the unbanked. If you are from a first world country, you probably don't realize this because everybody has a bank account, but there are many people in poorer country that don't have access to banking and it make it really difficult for them to save their money and escape poverty. So with blockchain, everybody can be banked. We don't need anybody permission. Another use case is foreign remittances. So you have a lot of workers from lower income country that go abroad to work and they send a part of their salary back home. And to do this, they use services like Western Union that charge a lot, 10% or more. And so that's a lot of money that is taken from people who are already really poor. So with blockchain, we can transfer money anywhere in the world at a fraction of the cost. And after that, blockchain can totally reinvent financial market. That's what we call DeFi or decentralized finance. DeFi is a better finance, more open, more transparent and more composable, meaning that anybody can build on top of other DeFi projects, which is absolutely not the case with traditional finance. For example, you cannot go to see a bank and ask them if they have a public API that you can use. It doesn't exist. So DeFi is really huge right now. On the Ethereum blockchain, we have a $45 billion that are locked in DeFi and now it starts to spread to other blockchain like a Binance Smart Chain. To give you some specific use case for DeFi, first we have a stable coins, which are crypto assets that always keep the same value. So it's much better to be used in many financial applications, also for commerce, for payments. We also have decentralized exchanges or just DEX like Uniswap. These allow you to exchange your assets with other traders in a totally decentralized way without any KYC. In DeFi, you can also lend and borrow money in a totally decentralized way. And you also have other things that are totally unique to DeFi that absolutely do not exist in traditional finance, like flash loans that allow you to borrow a ton of money without providing any collateral. So to answer the initial question of the video, is blockchain useful in real life? The answer is yes. Out of all the potential use cases for blockchain, there are two that really stand out and start to have some serious traction. I'm talking of NFT for artists and DeFi or decentralized finance. But before you can start understanding NFT and DeFi, the first step is to understand how blockchain works. And for that, I recommend to watch this video next on my channel. I will see you there.